creating platforms and services that can be called battle tested from the start. I'm Tanya Hall for ZDNet and Tech Republic, and joining me is Jason McGee. He is an IBM fellow, vice president and chief technology officer for IBM Cloud Platform. Welcome, Jason. Thanks for having me. What is the role of IBM's cloud platform within the larger organization? So obviously in, in today's industry, uh, cloud is uh, an incredibly important pattern for customers on how they run their IT systems. Uh, within IBM Cloud, we have uh, a strategy that includes both public clouds and private clouds for customers to run in their data centers. Uh, and so IBM Cloud uh, plays the role uh, of the public cloud platform uh, for hosting all kinds of solutions for customers. Explain the serverless versus containers debate. <laughs> yeah, it seems like in our industry, uh, as new technologies evolve, uh, people become true believers, right? You know, you're either today, you're either a container guy or, or person or you're a serverless person. Um, my view is that these are actually uh, pretty complementary technologies. They solve different problems. Containers is really becoming the new generic kind of platform that can run any kind of workload. It can run web applications and databases. It can run analytics and machine learning. Very flexible. Serverless is a technology that's good for event-oriented computing. Now, if you are processing sensor data from uh, an IoT device, uh, you're responding to changes in files that you're uploaded to video transcoding, um, serverless is a really nice pattern for that because it's very uh, good at helping you build event-oriented systems. And so these are really two flavors that help developers build applications more quickly and efficiently on the cloud that can be used together. So before we get into specific projects, why is it important for IBM to invest so much work in the open community? How will this work benefit your clients and the market? Yeah, I mean, you know, for 20 years or more, um, you know, at least my personal experience in cloud uh, or in, in IT spans over 20 years, you know, IBM's role has been to be the platform on which our customers can build their solutions, um, you know, mostly enterprise clients. Um, and so, you know, if you think about that role of platform, you're really about how do you build and host applications. And, you know, one thing that customers want today is the flexibility to run those applications they build anywhere. They want portability. They want to know that the investments that they're making give them flexibility in the future. The best way to achieve that is open technologies. Um, and so IBM, for more than 20 years, has been a huge proponent of open source uh, we create open source projects, we contribute to them, we help lead them, we help with governance on them because we think it's the most effective way for our clients to be able to uh, build their solutions and protect the investments that they make. Okay, what is K-Native? And how can you refer to a new technology as battle-tested? What contributions did IBM specifically make to ready it for the enterprise use? Sure. So Knative is the is the kind of latest in a in a series of open source projects um, in the container ecosystem that um, IBM's been involved in. Um, Knative is actually trying to solve um, an interesting problem that's emerged as everyone has agreed on things like containers and Kubernetes. And that problem is how do we bring uh, models like serverless and um, application models like what we're doing with Cloud Foundry. Uh, closer to Kubernetes. You know, if Kubernetes is going to become the platform uh, that everyone builds on, uh, we don't want serverless, for example, to be this completely separate way of doing everything. We want to bring them together and be able to build one concept on top of the other. And so we needed a set of comp components to enable that to happen. Um, I think it's battle tested because a lot of these open source projects derive from work that IBM has been doing, that Google has been doing, that, that people have been doing in their own sphere for a long time. So at IBM, one of the innovative things that we did a few years ago is we launched the Apache OpenWhisk project. Um, in the serverless space, almost all the serverless platforms out there are proprietary. They are tied to a particular cloud vendor. When we started our journey to build serverless, we said, well, open communities matter. We want open technology. So we took our technology and we open sourced it. We've been running that at scale for multiple years now. We have you know, lots of customers using it internally and externally. And we've contributed that experience that we've gained running a serverless platform at scale with OpenWhisk into our contributions in Knative. So we can help that project 
not spend the next year relearning all the lessons that we've already learned by running systems like this for a long time. And so we've been doing work uh, to help with, with things like scale. One of the pitfalls of cloud native architectures is complexity. Mm. Why is that? <laughs> complexity, um, I think arises in, in, uh, for a couple of reasons. I mean, one is, um, one of the defining characteristics of cloud native architectures is uh, scale out designs, meaning you, you make system scale by horizontally adding more and more instances. And another common characteristic of cloud native is microservices. And microservices is just fundamentally about breaking up a problem into independent pieces and assigning separate teams to work on those pieces. But the result of those two things is a lot more operational complexity. Like you have many more things to manage, like more moving parts. And the other side effect of that is because you've created independent teams, you've given them independent choice about what technologies to use to solve whatever problem they have to solve. Uh, and therefore, if you look at the system as a whole, you have lots of technologies and lots of moving parts, which is lots of complexity and it breeds new problems that you have to go solve. You know, there's benefits of that as well, you know, faster velocity, um, easier to make changes, but there's trade-offs, right? And, and that's really, I think, the tension that always exists in our industry between, you know, if you want one benefit, you often have to give up something else. Is that where Istio fits in? I mean, what is its relationship with Kubernetes? Yeah, it, it is a little bit where Istio fits in. So um, I think about the platform, the kind of container platform in three basic layers. There's containers themselves, like what Docker uh, popularized, which really made all of us agree on how to package software and how to run software. Then there's the orchestration layer with Kubernetes, like, okay, I don't have one container, I have a hundred or a thousand containers, how do I manage them all and start them and keep them up and scale them? But those thousand containers, really, if you look at it, are a bunch of different services or different applications talking to each other. How do you actually manage how they interact with each other? How do you have visibility into who's talking to who? How do you control updates? So like what versions of all those components you're using? And how do you secure the communication between all those components? That's what Istio is trying to solve. It's trying to give us kind of a smart network in between all the services where we can do visibility, do security, do uh, kind of programmable routing so we can control updates and essentially give you the tools that you need to be successful at managing all the complexity that you get from microservice architectures. You mentioned security. So where does app and data security fit into the bigger picture? Uh, you know, security is always the problem that you have to find a way to solve to make all your other desires come true. Everyone likes to try to ignore security, but you can't. Um, one of the big changes that Istio is enabling is a movement in how security gets applied. So historically, we've done security, for example, at the network level. You know, you, you control the network, you control who can talk to who on the network. Um, that works, but it, it requires you to have a deep knowledge of the network itself. And in the modern world, you know, my application might run on IBM Cloud, and part of it runs on Amazon, and part of it runs in my data center, and part of it is a SaaS property you don't really have control over a single network. So those ideas are harder to, to leverage in our world. What Istio does is let us move that security problem up closer to the application. So I can say application A is allowed to talk to application B, and I can say that in a way that's completely independent of where it runs, what network it's on. Um, so I've kind of moved all the security policy up to the application level, and that gives me just tremendous flexibility on where I run things and how teams operate without having to kind of get into all the gory details of the network underneath. So it's really transforming how security gets applied uh, into these systems. So what does the future hold for Istio? And how will IBM be able to bring Istio uh, to its own clients? Sure, so I think it's a pretty exciting time for the Istio project. You know, we, we um, Istio was founded by IBM and Google. We've been working together on it for going on two years. Um, we just released the 1.0 release. So, you know, I think the near-term future for Istio is really um, uh, adoption, right? I mean, you know, it's, it's crossed that invisible line where we're saying this thing is ready for you to use in production systems. And so I think for the next six or 12 months, it'll largely be about people adopting Istio, the current capabilities, um, and us, of course, learning from that and evolving the project to make it better. 
Um, I, I think there's some new problems that Istio is still working on. I think there's a huge opportunity for tools around Istio, you know, taking the primitive capabilities Istio provides and building better CI CD tools, build, building better analysis tools, you know, building better rollout tools. Um, I also think there's a big opportunity in Istio around what I think of as hybrid environments. You know, how do you have a smart service mesh that spans on-prem and off-prem, that spans different clouds? Because the reality, especially in the enterprise market, is there's a lot of complexity. There's a lot of deployment complexity in how real applications work, and Istio has an ability to help us solve that problem. Jason McGee, IBM Fellow, VP and CTO of IBM Cloud Platform. Thank you so much for joining me to shed some light on some of this area. If somebody wants to connect with you, maybe they want to find out more about your work or connect with you personally, how can they do that? Uh, at JR McGee on Twitter is probably the easiest. And uh, thank you so much for having me here. Absolutely. And if you guys want to find out more of my interviews, you can do that right here on ZDNet or Tech Republic. Or maybe find me by going to tanyahall.net. I've got links to all my social sites. Thanks for watching.